need the wake card. And we ask that you also join us in praying. Uh, probably more so for the family because Jim is always taking care of himself. And, uh, pray for ourselves and those who are still fighting the good battle. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. As we share much of the suffering of Christ, so we rise to share abundantly in the consolation. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all people might be saved and pass from death to a new life. Listen to our prayers. Look with love on your people who mourn and pray for their dead brother. Lord Jesus, you alone are holy and compassionate. Forgive our brother his sins. By dying, you open the gates of life for those who believe in you. Do not let our brother be parted from you, but by your glorious power, give him light, give him joy, give him peace in heaven where you live forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading tonight we take from the Old Testament, from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in view of the foolish, to be dead. Their passing away was thought to be an affliction. Their going forth was utter destruction, but they are in peace. If before people they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. As sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. And this is the word of the Lord. From the consolation of Isaiah, <coughs> fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my right hand of justice. For I am the Lord your God who grasp your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I will help you. I have brushed away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb. And even though she would forget, I will never forget you. See, upon the palms of my hand, I have written your name. Yes, in joy you shall depart. In peace you shall be brought back. Next reading, then we take from the Gospel according to John. Meanwhile, Mary stood weeping beside the tomb, and even as she wept, she stooped to pull Pierre inside. And there she saw two angels in dazzling robes. One was seated at the head, and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus had lain. And they said, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said, Because the Lord has been taken away, and I do not know where they have put him. She no sooner said this than she turned around and caught sight of Jesus standing there, but she did not know him. And he said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who is it you're looking for? And she, thinking it was the gardener, said, Sir, if you are the one who carried him off, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary. And she turned and said, Rabboni. And Jesus said, Don't cling to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father, but rather go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene 
went to the disciples and said, I've seen the Lord. And she reported what he had said to her. And this is the gospel of the Lord. As we finish the gospel, I'd like to take a few moments to just to say a few words here. Uh, and also afterwards, uh, some have expressed a desire also to say a few words. And so um, Nancy said it's kind of like the Irish wake services. And so it's a little lighter, perhaps, than uh, sometimes the wake services that we may be accustomed to. Uh, I think anyone would like to say a few things where you'll be welcome to afterwards. Uh, right now, since we just finished the gospel, and it seems to be the more appropriate time for the priest, um, I'd like to just mention my relationship and affiliation with Jim, which went back many, many years. Uh, I think I know the first time we formally met, uh, we had invited him. I was in a small town up north, and we had invited him to give a conference on what else, uh, communications to our uh, religious education teachers. And uh, I can remember the year because it was the same time, the same week or two weeks that the twins were born, so I can always refer around that as, as a way of knowing about how long it was. And uh, Jim, of course, did his excellent job. And I, and I was thinking as I was driving here tonight that probably all of us who communicate would not have done as well of a job as if Jim himself were communicating with you tonight to uh, put across whatever ideas or concepts we may be trying to say. Uh, fortunately, our lives did crisscross after that. But eventually, I, I came to Hayes. And eventually, then I had the opportunity to know Jim as a real Jim and not just as a conference leader and not just as a speaker, but as a neat person as some would describe, as a humorous person, as a caring person, uh, all the different elements that all of us can give to him and all of which are very, very true about him. Uh, but our relationship pretty much resolved around three areas. One was spiritual because he always went to Mass every morning, but after Mass, quite often we go over to everybody's and have breakfast, and that was when we became a devil's advocate with each other. And, uh, We'd always bounced ideas off from each other and kind of check out you know, who was saying the wrong thing or who was saying the right thing or how could this be looked at in another sense or how can we look at it in a different sense. And uh, uh, a very exciting part of my life because anytime I had a new idea, it could be explored with him to a, to a very great degree. Um, another area in which I re they, they speak of Jim as being a nice, caring guy, one of the areas he was not caring is when we played racquetball. Uh, <laughs> And of course, so large and so big, all he had to do was stand in the middle of the court. And if, if you would have watched this, now there are others, I think Dorothy's going to talk later on, he was nice to people like Dorothy, but <laughs> to me, he ran me around all over us, forward, backward, here, there, sideways. I got lots of exercise, and he got no exercise at all. He stood there and hit it back and forth. But, uh, uh, it was good for me, I don't know if it's good for him, but it was good for me. I was thinking also a couple of weeks ago that as a surprise, uh, our children at uh, our grade school, they make up masses. And one day I saw in their costumes on me, and I almost forgot about that because uh, Jim also wrote music. And uh, his, <coughs> excuse me, his music is still used by people who, never, who had no idea who he was, uh, but they still liked that. And uh, he, of course, uh, was a person that both of us found, both of us, B and Irie, still found a very good niche here in the in the Volga German settlement and uh, found a good place to both of us call home for a time in which we all enjoyed it. So I'd like to continue then with uh, our uh, profession of, uh, where am I here? with our Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice in supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me the day I called. The cords of death encompassed me. The snares of the netherworld seized upon me. I fell into distress and sorrow and called upon the name of the Lord. Lord, save my life. Amen. Gracious is the Lord and just, yes. Our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low. He saved me. Return, my soul, to your tranquility, for the Lord has been good to you. He has freed my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. 
I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living, and from my flesh I shall see God. Our profession of faith. My friends, we would have you be clear about those who sleep in death. Otherwise, you might yield to grief like those who have no hope. I solemnly assure you, lest the grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. If, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. It is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of what he has given me, but rather I should raise him up on the last day. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. I am going to prepare a place for you, and then I shall come back to take you with me, that where I am, you also may be. I wish to know Christ and the power from his resurrection, and likewise to know how to share in his sufferings by being formed into the pattern of his death. In baptism you are not only buried with him, but also raised to life with him, because you believed in the power of God who raised him from the dead. Just as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will come to life again. I consider the sufferings of the present to be as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed in us. Your life is hidden now with Christ in God. When Christ our life appears, then you shall appear with him in glory. They shall see him face to face and bear his name on their foreheads. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it so much as dawned on man what God has prepared for those who love him. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth and the former heavens and the former earth had passed away. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride prepared to meet her husband. He shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, there shall be no more death or mourning, crying out or pain. Thank you, God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to spend a few moments now, and anybody would like to just make some observations or some thoughts, and I'll let Dorothy start off with uh, some ideas. Yesterday afternoon, as Nancy was with her family and friends, we thought that Jim would like it if we would share some of our thoughts about him. Um, and I'm going to ask you in a few minutes, any of you who feel comfortable to do so, anything that you would like to share. Um, I've written mine down in a letter to Jim. I'd like to, to share that with you. Dear friend Jim, 
I've been writing this letter to you in my heart for months. Our friendship is a wonderful, mysterious, and at times weird adventure. So many thoughts and memories define this adventure. Our friendship started and developed on the racquetball court. <laughs> we can now be honest with each other, Jim, since we both know you were a better player than I, although I did give you a run for the crown every now and then. We used racquetball as an excuse to tell jokes. Yours could generally be told in mixed company and mine couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> to write my screams on a scale from one to ten, I can't remember that you ever gave me anything below a seven. <laughs> to analyze or to, be to, or to be more accurate, lament our administrative woes. We generally agreed we knew how it should be done, and they, the ones who differed in opinion from us, didn't. <laughs> to describe in great detail the gourmet meal we were each having for supper. My meals paled in comparison to yours, but then your descriptions were elaborate and vivid. <laughs> Jim, did you really have meals like that every night? <laughs> Although our friendship started growing on the racquetball court, it had outside support to develop strong and far-reaching roots. Jeannie and Jennifer and Victoria had two sets of parents between you and Nancy and Terry and I. The miraculous growth ingredient, however, was Nancy. She supported, encouraged, and enjoyed our love for each other. What a great gift she gave you and I, Jim. Although you would get cross with me, Jim, when I canceled out of a racquetball game, at which time you remind me to get my priorities in order. <laughs> we never had a major disagreement. You need to know, Jim, that at times I also got cross with you. For example, Jim Jr. would come home and immediately there would be a marked improvement in your disposition. <laughs> you attributed to this to male bonding, <laughs> probably just to get my goat. Jim, you are the ultimate teacher. You live to teach whether it was in the classroom or giving a workshop or a motivational talk. You taught me much in the last three years as you lived each day. I am blessed. You and Nancy allowed me to be an intimate part of your lives. I can remember the joy on your face just this past Monday when you told me in detail about the baptism of Alexi, Jane and Roy's baby daughter, your granddaughter. Because of the generosity of both you and Nancy, I saw and felt courage, caring, love, and respect on a daily basis. Well, Jimbo, I'll wait to hear from you. Let me know what the meals are like and what kind of jokes you've heard. <laughs> Your friend, Dorothy. P.S. I miss you and I love you. Someone else like to share some thoughts they have about the relationship with Jim? I'll try. Okay. Okay. It'll take me a while, but I'll do it. He called me tricky, I call it to see. <laughs> He's my hero. Uh, I tried to be everything he was. I tried to walk like him, tried to talk like him, tried to laugh like him. But I couldn't come close to his mind. His his mind was another dimension. I couldn't reach it. <laughs> but, uh, but it was his heart and his soul that touched, as we all know, his students, his friends. His passion, his love of learning and students, his intellect wasn't what caught me. It was his heart and his soul 
all these students, his caring, his loving. And it couldn't help but overpower you. And so the good news is, is that whoever he met that went in your heart and your soul and everybody from there after, after ceased to became my friend, my hero, I couldn't help but have that same enthusiasm, that same caring, loving. And so he's, he lives in all his students. He lives, he lives in all, and it's going to be spread. thousands and thousands of people will, will be touched by his life because of the way he shared himself. Uh, so, if one is to is to build a university, you build it on these values and these beliefs. There's lots of smart people, lots of smart people. But his heart, his soul, his passion, his love is what every university needs. That's the foundation of any university. At the darkest moment in my life, C was there for me and told me, he said, don't you know that I love you? Can't you see that I love you? And I didn't think anybody did. On, I was one of those high risk students that struggled and was the high moment of my life when, because he did that all the time. He'd see you, he'd say, hey, Trex, how's it going? Or Mary Z or whoever it is. And he remembers everything that you did at, in class. And the thing that stands out most in my mind was something I wrote on Aristotle. And I couldn't write about anything, I didn't think, at that time. Didn't have no belief in myself at all. He said, Trix, that's the best thing I've ever read. He said, it's beautiful. He said, you really did that well. And I went on to write a lot because he believed in me. And I love him very much. Kind of introduce my friend John. Um, as a student, I would like to say that uh, it's absolutely impossible to imagine how much Dr. Costigan meant to me as far as influencing my life. They charge you so much for a credit dollar at any college. Most of the time it's overpriced, and this time it's way underpriced. Um, he made me think about things, and I know everybody that took his class felt the same way. You'd leave his class, and you thought about it, and thought about it, and thought about it. After you left his class, for days, and for weeks, and for years, in my case, and, uh, I mean, it, there's just no way I can describe that, I mean, how important that is. Um, and I hope to be in the education business someday, and if I, I could ever have that effect on me, one student, that'd be very important to me. Um, to make them think that long and that hard about the important things that are in the world. And my friend John, I know, has got some important things to say. Finally, I get a microphone my size. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't cried this much since my dad told me we were moving to Colby. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good crowd. I should I should play funeral homes more often. <laughs> I don't know. I cried a lot yesterday, and it's funny. The tears that I did cry yesterday were for me and for for you. The people that knew Jim. 
the tears that I cried today, and I will cry tomorrow, <laughs> are for the people that did not know Jim. I've never had to do anything tougher. I've stood in audiences of 500 people and given Jim's ducks and eagles speech. And it wasn't near as tough as his, believe me. I don't know. People have been searching for the secret of immortality for forever, since there's been man. And Jim, Jim found the secret. He touched so many lives. You see, Jim's not dead. A man like Jim can never die. Not as long as there's me and there's you. Every time I see an Abbott and Costello movie, <laughs> Jim will be there. Jim will be sitting alongside of me laughing as hard as I am. Every time I stand in front of a group of people and try and make them laugh, Jim will be there. Whenever I stand in front of a class of students and try and teach and have the same enthusiasm and the same wisdom and wit that Jim had, he'll be there with his arm around me. <laughs> Every time that I hear a stupid, stupid Uncle Patty joke, <laughs> Jim will be there with the punchline. See, that was the... That was Jim's philosophy. That was his key. That we have responsibility with every relationship we make. Now our, our responsibility, Jim, is to keep him alive. We all have the power to do that. We all are eagles. We have that power to keep Jim alive. And we have to make the decision to do that. Now I've made the decision that I will try my darndest to make those audiences laugh, to laugh myself, and to, uh, to do everything I can to make him proud. And I hope I can do that. Thank you. He was a very beautiful member of our folk choir, and, and his life touched us not only in the teaching that he shared, but the song that he wrote. His whole life was a song, and it had many movements and many things, and uh, it touched us, especially in church, and for that I'm thankful. like to say something. letter could have been written by any student who had Jim, and so I'd like to read it to you. It was written on April 22, 1991. 
I wanted to take just a moment to write a letter of appreciation for all you have done for me. You are an amazing teacher, a person that has the ability to change lives and influence directions that young minds and bodies take. You have a gift that very few other people on earth have, and I want you to know what you have meant to me. And all the hours I've spent with you in the classroom in conference and conversation and training, I have had the opportunity to make many observations about you. Your skill is your love for people, and most importantly, the way you convey that love to people. Getting in the path of Dr. Jim is like getting in the path of a tornado that is only moving up. And up is the direction we all dream of going. You build more self-esteem by walking into a room than most people dream of doing in a lifetime. That, my friend, is a gift that you have to share with the people who are fortunate enough to learn with you. I am lucky to have spent some significant time with you. You gave me gifts that I will never forget and never be able to repay. <clears throat> what is special about those gifts is that you have never asked for repayment. You know, as I know, that I will take the skills that I have learned from you and pass them on to my students. In essence, what we have done is help to perpetuate the cycle of life. Your karma touched my karma that will touch others. I hope you realize the power you have and how well you have used it. I do think of you often. I will always cherish, appreciate, and use the life skills that you have taught me. I certainly got more than just a master's degree during my time at Fort Hayes. I am glad I can call you friend. Thank you, Jim. I am thinking about you. And his students said that very well before, didn't you? A short prayer. Father, tonight we entrust our brother to your mercy. You loved him greatly in this life. Now that he is freed from all its cares, give him happiness and peace forever. The old order has passed away. Welcome him now into paradise where there will be no more sorrow, no more weeping or pain, but only peace and joy. But Jesus, your Son, and the Spirit who lives forever and ever. Amen. Jim, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace and eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.